Hello everyone. In this video, first I'll explain what is Kubernetes event-driven autoscaling, which is KEDA, and then how KEDA is used in Azure Container Apps, and finally show the step-by-step -step deployment of KEDA using Azure Service Bus and Azure Container Apps in the lab. So let's start with what are the different scaling options which are used in Azure Container Apps. So you can create rules based on HTTP requests. So if you have a certain number of concurrent HTTP requests, then the auto scaling will happen and your containers will scale up in your revision. Same works with the TCP also. So if there are certain number of TCP connections above than what's defined, then the scaling will happen in the revision. And the third one, which is the most important one is the custom scaling rule. And they are based on CPU memory and event driven data sources. So CPU memory is straightforward where you define the CPU usage as well as the memory usage. However, for the event driven data sources, the scaling happens based on the different events. It can be from Azure Service Bus, Azure Events Hub, Apache Kafka or Redis. So these are just the example. However, there are around 70 data sources. So this event driven scaling in Azure Container Apps is done using KEDA. So now let's explain what is KEDA. So KEDA is a Kubernetes event driven auto scaling, which is a mechanism in Kubernetes. So the horizontal pod scaling means the different pods or the containers can be scaled up and down based on the different metrics or the events. And KEDA has different scalers. Like it can be queue based scalers, database based scalers, metrics based scalers or the time based scalers. And each scalar has different triggers. Like for the queue based scalar, you can use the Azure service bus as the trigger. And for metric based scalers, you can use the Prometheus CPU memory as the trigger. So now to use this KEDA in Azure container apps, you need to go to their website, which is KEDA.sh. Let me just quickly open the website. And this is the website keda.sh where it provides all the details. Now if we'll go to the scalers, if we'll go to the documentation and the scalers, there are around 70 scalers which are available and you can use them here. So let me search the service bus, Azure service bus, click on here. So here you have to define the trigger, which is Azure service bus. And then you have to define the metadata. There are some required fields like these or the optional ones, which you can define. So now because KEDA is a mechanism of the Kubernetes, however, it's supported in Azure container apps. But instead of using the YAML file in the Azure container apps, you can define the trigger details in the Azure portal itself, where you have to define the trigger as well as the metadata while creating the custom scaling rule. So in this lab, I'm going to use Azure Service Bus as the event trigger. But Azure Service Bus is a different service to Azure Container Apps. So there should be authentication between Azure Service Bus and Azure Container Apps. And there are two ways this can be done. One is using the connection string of Azure Service Bus, which you can save as the secrets in Azure Container Apps. Or you can use the managed identity, where you can use the system managed identity and define the role-based access control so that the Azure Container App can check the messages sent by the Azure service bus. But in this lab, I'll focus on using the connection string, which I'll save in the secrets of Azure container apps. So let's start the deployment of custom scaling in the lab. I'm logged into Azure portal now. So I'll start with the creation of service bus. Look for service bus. Create a new service bus. I'll create a new resource group, RG event scaling. And the namespace is shell in the test bus zero one. Location will be Australia is because I'm based out of Australia and the pricing tier. I'll choose basic here because we just want to send some messages and after a certain number of messages are sent to Azure container apps, the scaling should happen. So this is what we are testing. So once we'll have the service bus ready, then we'll use the already existing container apps, which is a web app and we'll set up this custom scaling rules. 
So if the number of messages sent from the service bus exceed the defined number of messages, then the scaling should happen. I'm not enabling the Geo application. It's setting up the minimum TLS version Verma 2, local authentication by default enabled, not changing anything, public access enabled. I'll just review and create now. It's validating now. And once the validation is done, I'll click on create. The validation is successful. I'll just create it now. The deployment has started and soon the service bus should be ready. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the service bus is created. So the deployment is completed now. Let's go to resource and a service bus is created. Let's create a queue, test queue. I'll just leave everything default and create. So now in the service bus namespace, I have created one queue and if we'll go to the entities in the queue, you can see that queue, test queue. Right now, there are no messages in the queue because I haven't sent any and I click on shared access policies. I'll create a new policy. Test policy. Here we are managing like sending and listening everything. And the policy is getting created. And the test policy is created now. If you click on the test policy, you can see the different connection strings which are available. And we'll use these connection string in the Azure container apps. So let me go to Azure container apps. Look for container apps. And there is already one container app which is created. This video is a part of Azure container app series. So there are previous videos where I have deployed this container app using the Python Flask application. I'll start this container app. And if I'll click on application URL, soon this URL should be available. So now if I'll go to revisions, there is one active revision where there is one replica which has started. And if we'll go to the web page, you can see the web page is visible now. Before we set up the custom scaling rule, we have to create a secret so that Azure Container App can do the polling on Azure Service Bus. So if we'll go to settings, secrets, add. So let's name this as Service Bus Connection. And we'll copy the secret from Service Bus. Let me open the portal in another tab. We'll go to Service Bus and go to the policy which we have created, test policy and primary connection string. Let's copy this and save it as secret. And it's updating the secret. So the secrets are updated now. Now let's go to scale. First for the scaling rule, the default is minimum replica is zero, maximum is 10. However, I would like to change it to two because I don't want the scaling to go above certain level. And if you'll click on the scaling rule, service bus rule, you can name anything here. And we have to go to the custom rule click on custom rule. Now you have to define the custom rule type and this information you have to find either in the CADA website, which is here. So type is Azure service bus or you can go to CADA scaling Azure container apps and go to Microsoft documentation. And if you'll go here, you can see that how to define the custom rules. And for the service bus, you need these three values and the type is Azure service bus. So let's go back. Azure service bus is defined as a rule type for the secret reference service bus connection and the trigger parameter. You have to go back and look for authentication. So if you look for authentication, go down in the authentication, it's written as connection. You have to define it as connection. So now if we'll go back, 
and write the trigger parameter as connection and different metadata have to be defined. So if you'll go to the website here, so first one is queue name. Second one is namespace, which is the name of the service bus. And the third one is the message count. So the queue name, if we'll go back here, go to entities in the queues. So test queue is the name of the queue. Namespace is the name of the service bus, which is shell in the test bus zero one. And the message count, let's set it up as five for now. Let's add this scaling rule now. The scaling rule is added, but you can save only with a new revision. So once you'll save it, a new revision will be created and the current revision will be deprovisioned. So save. Now if we'll go to the revisions and if we'll refresh and now uh, the new revision is getting activated and the previous revision will be deprovisioned soon. So if we'll go to overview, click on application URL, it's showing the page. The previous revision is getting deprovisioned now. Let's wait for it to deprovision and then using the service bus, I'll send more than five messages and see if the scaling happens or not. Right now there is only one replica which is running and we are ready to test. So let's go to our service bus, get to the queue, service bus explorer, send messages, test, again, again. We have to do this five times. So if we'll go back, there are five messages, five active messages are there. And soon the polling from Azure container apps will start and based on that scaling should happen. Let's go and check. And now if we'll see here, if I'll refresh, it's showing the two replicas now. And for this revision, now there are two replicas running. And if we'll go to monitoring, and log stream, and the system logs. Now you can see that there are five different messages. Messages, as you can see, there are five different messages for the different time. And based on that, replica count has changed. So if we'll go back, revisions, the replica count is two and it's showing it's running at its max. So if we'll keep sending the service best messages, so it will still remain the number of replicas to be two because in the scale we have defined that maximum will be two and the service bus, if there are more than five messages, then the scaling will happen. So to summarize this video, I have first explained what is the custom auto scaling rule in Azure container apps. Then I explained the CADA mechanism and how the CADA scalers are used in Azure Container Apps and finally showed the step-by-step -step deployment of the custom scaling rule using Azure Service Bus and Azure Container Apps. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.